Good afternoon. How are you today? Good. Excellent. I am Lieutenant Dave Pyle from the Grand Rapids Fire Department, but you can call me Firefighter Dave. I'm here today to talk about fire safety, fire prevention, show you my firefighting stuff. Hopefully there's an engine that shows up a little bit later, but they are working, so maybe they get busy, but I, I'm trying to get an engine here so you guys can go check out a fire engine a little bit, okay? Uh -huh. Gonna have a little bit of fun. Hopefully you learn something while we're at it. Sound like a plan? Yeah. All right. Before we get too out of control, I have a list of rules that I like to go over that we need to follow to make this go smoothly, because without rules, what do you have? Chaos, anarchy. We don't want that. So here's my rules with a shout out to the Dead Bob Show. I stole some of these from him. So rule number one, pay attention, pay attention. I'll be talking, you need to be listening. There'll be an exchange of information. At the end, there'll be a test. Oh no, we don't want a test, Firefighter Dave. No, really, if you pay attention, it'll be an easy test, I promise. And maybe we'll make it a competition between the students and the teachers to see who is listening better. Mm -hmm. Okay, rule number two, respond when requested. I'm gonna be talking, I'm gonna be asking questions, and when I ask a question, I want you to give me the answer. For instance, what color is the sky? Blue. Perfect, I asked a question, you gave me an answer, and it was the right one, nice job. Rule number three, respond only when requested. That means when I'm talking and I don't ask you a question, you should not be talking to me or to anybody else. The sky is blue. Perfect, it wasn't a question and you didn't say anything, nice job. Rule number four, save your questions until the end. When I'm done talking about this, the point in time where you get to ask me questions about my firefight and stuff, I'll give you some answers. Maybe it'll be right, but you don't know. Rule number five, there is no, there is no rule number five. There is no rule number five. Okay, somebody out here has to have a rule that I can borrow to put up here. It's got to be a good rule, a good everyday, not about firefighting, but a good everyday rule. Something you use every day, something like, don't pick your nose. Yeah. You! But a good rule. What's, what's your good rule? Responsibility. Be responsible for your actions. That's a good one right there. Number five is be responsible. There we go. And number six, have fun and learn something. Good rules? Do we agree to follow these rules? Yeah! All right, let's get started. Since this is fire safety and fire prevention, there are certain things I'm required to talk about. Okay, let's, we'll go over them first and we'll see if we can have a little fun with them. Matches and lighters. If you know what matches and lighters are, raise your hand. All right, hands down. Firefighter Dave says, if you are not old enough to have a driver's license, you are not old enough for matches and lighters. Not ever, never, ever, ever, never, ever, 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 never, ever. Okay? <laughs> No matches light. Since you're first, second, and third grade, you don't have a driver's license, therefore, no matches and lighters. Don't touch them, okay? Don't play with them. If you find them, go tell a grown-up, have them take care of them, all right? All right, what is next? Um, candles, pretty to look at. You, sometimes they smell good. You find them on birthday cakes? I like birthday cake. Get in my belly, birthday cake. Mmm, yeah. Birthday cake in my belly makes me happy. Okay, but candles, we're not gonna play with them, we're not gonna stick our fingers or pens or pencils or crochet hooks or anything in there, don't play with the candles. If it's your birthday, you can blow out your own candles, that's fine. But if it's my birthday, I will blow out my own candles. You do not need to help me, okay? There's a lot of them, but I got it, I'm Firefighter Day, all right? Um, oh, save your questions to the end. Save your questions to the end. Not gonna call on you. Okay, uh, smoke detectors. Everybody has to have smoke detectors, it is the law. Make sure your parents check them, make sure they're working, make sure they hit test the, the button, make sure they go off, don't let them take them down. Don't let them take the batteries out. If you don't have one, you need to get some. If you have to, stop by the fire station, we got a box of them, we'll give you one for free. That's how important it is. We've got a box of them, we'll let you have one. You need to have more than one, but if you need one, we'll let you have one at the fire station, stop by and see us. But smoke detectors, they're very important for you, you gotta have them. Make sure your parents test them, make sure they're working. Um, this year's theme is safety in the kitchen. I don't know how that really you know, goes down to elementary school very well, but all we're gonna say is that first, second, and third grade, you are definitely not old enough to be using the stove, the oven, or the microwave without a close uh, grown up, uh, uh, an adult, a responsible person there. And when I say responsible, 
I don't mean your older brother just because when things go wrong, he's responsible. That's not what I mean. Okay, you know what I mean by a responsible person. A grown-up, somebody who's there. And when somebody is using the stove and the oven, okay, make sure somebody stays in the kitchen, make sure that you know, it doesn't catch fire. Maybe you wanted to microwave popcorn tw two minutes, accidentally hit 22 minutes, that's a bad deal. Burned popcorn stinks, okay? So that's it. I think that's it for the Mandy Story stuff. Let's move on. Helmets. Firefighter Dave has a helmet with a North Park sticker on it, too. Eh? Uh. Firefighter Dave has a helmet, and it's a firefighter helmet. Coincidence? Probably not. I have a helmet to protect my head. The skull, the cranium, the noggin, the head bone. Without the head, the rest of the body doesn't work. You got to protect the head. That's why I wear a helmet. Say I'm at a fire somewhere and a brick were to fall. What was that? Oh, it was a brick. But I had a helmet on, my head was protected. But if I didn't have a helmet on, yeah. Oh, but, but now I gotta go to the hospital and they give me stitches and I get a pink band-aid with a purple unicorn, a little flower. Yeah, oh. You know, now you're making fun of my band-aid and my head hurts and it's a bad day and I just don't want to deal with that so I wear my helmet to protect my head. And there's times when you need to wear helmets to protect your head. When you ride a bike, you should wear a... Helmet. Yes, when you ride your skateboard, you should wear a... Helmet. And elbow pads and knee pads. Hey, hands to yourself. Hey, hands to yourself. Okay, keep your hand down. All right. When they change the law, but when you ride on a motorcycle, you need to wear a helmet. Right. When you get shot out of a cannon, you're going to wear a helmet. I don't know why you're getting shot out of a cannon. <laughs> that does that does, hey, that does not sound very safe to Firefighter Dave. That, that I admit it might be fun, but it sounds really dangerous, and I don't recommend you get shot out of a cannon. But if you're going to get shot out of a cannon, Wear a helmet. Hey, you. You. Back up to the open spot. Back up to the open spot. Thank you. All right. So make sure you wear a helmet. That one might be on the test. Get shot out of a cannon. Wear a helmet. That one might be on the test. I'm just saying. Maybe. All right. In case of emergency, there's a place we call 911 Dispatch. And they have a very special phone number that you would dial to get to 911 Dispatch. Who here knows the phone number for 911? Okay, all together, the phone number for 911 is? 911! Yes, 911 is indeed the number for 911. That's, that's odd, isn't it? Someone was thinking, we need a phone number for 911. Hmm. Let's pick 911. Oh, you're a genius. Nice. 911 is for emergencies. Emergencies. Okay, somebody's hurt real bad, somebody's sick real bad, there's a car accident, there's smoke in the basement, you smell gas in the basement, there's a house fire, there's an alligator outside trying to eat you, rawr, rawr, rawr. yeah. <laughs> These are all emergencies, these are all emergencies. These are things we call 911 for. If you were riding your bike and got a flat tire, would you call 911? No. Not an emergency. If you have a pet rabbit and you run out of rabbit food, would you call 911? No. Not an emergency. The rabbit thinks it's an emergency. He's hungry. You don't have any food. It's not an emergency. We're not going to call 911 for things that are emergencies, okay? Not going to call, all right? Well, these are things you tell grown-ups for, but you're supposed to tell grown-ups anytime you have a problem. That's what grown-ups are for. Grown-ups' jobs are to keep you safe. Now, some grown-ups forget that, but it is every grown-ups' job to keep you safe and make sure you grow up, and then you become grown-ups, and then you keep kids safe. That's how it works. It's a vicious cycle, but that's how it's always worked, and that's how it's supposed to work. If you have a problem, tell a grown-up, let us help you. Tell your teacher, tell your mom and dad, tell Firefighter Dave, tell the principal. Okay, got a flat tire in your bike? Tell a grown-up. Okay, you're out of rabbit food? Tell a grown-up. Someone's being a bully to you or to somebody else, or somebody's doing something inappropriate? Go tell a grown-up. That's what we're there for. You flush the toilet, and it doesn't go down. It's going to make a mess. Oh, yuck. <laughs> <laughs> Go tell a grown-up, okay? Go tell a grown-up, that's a problem. As a grown-up and a parent, I can tell you that if you flush the toilet and you come to me and say, ooh, I flushed it and it made a mess, I'll go, oh, okay, let's fix it. But if you don't come and tell me and I find it all by myself, am I gonna be a little irritated? Yeah, yeah exactly. So whatever the problem is, whatever the problem is, little or big, 
whether you caused it, you saw it, or you just found it, go tell a grown-up. Let us help you. That's what we're there for, okay? Let's practice. Let's say I got a basement over here, and I'm going to go down in the basement and get some Christmas ornaments. I know it's early, but they're already selling Christmas ornaments, and it's not even Halloween yet, and they're selling, I think there's a law against that in there. Yeah, hello, Halloween, trick-or-treat. No, I got Christmas ornaments. So I'm going to go down in the basement and get some Christmas ornaments, okay? But on the way down, I know it's there's smoke in the basement. Is there supposed to be smoke in the basement? No. No. Is that a problem? Yeah. I should probably tell a grown-up, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then that grown-up's going to call a phone number. What phone number are they going to call? 911! Because this is an emergency. Hello, 911, what's your emergency? We have smoke in the basement. Okay, what's your address? They're going to want to know what your address is. Everybody here should know what your address is. And then they're going to say, the fire department's coming. Get out and stay out. That's important. Get outside and stay outside. Okay, get out to that family spot. It's where everybody's supposed to meet. At Firefighter Dave's house, it's the big tree in the backyard. Everybody knows that the smoke detector goes off. Or if there's an emergency, everybody goes to that tree. That's right. One didn't even Yep, everybody's outside. Perfect. Get to that spot so they know everybody's outside. That's important. You are special. Each one of you is very special. You are the only you there is. There is nobody anywhere in the world exactly like you. You are the only you anywhere in the world. There is nobody else like you. There never has been. There never will be. You are the only you. We cannot get another one of you because you're that special. Okay, all that stuff in your house, that stuff. Basketball, fishing pole, Xbox 360, television, couch, shoes, clothes. That stuff, that's at the store. We can get more of that. We can't get more of you because you're special. Get outside, stay outside, be safe. And then because you're outside where you're supposed to be, when Firefighter Dave and the crew from Engine 9 show up, you can go, Firefighter Dave, there's smoke in the basement and everybody's outside and we're safe. Perfect, because everybody thinks that firefighters, their number one job is to fight fire. Our number one job is life safety. Our number one job is to protect people and keep them safe. And if you can tell me everybody's out of the house and safe, perfect. I got nobody to rescue. I can go to my number two job, which is firefighting. And you told me where the problem is. I can go right down in the basement because you said, hey, there's smoke in the basement. Probably where the problem is, right? Yeah. yeah. So down I go with all my stuff. Perfect. But what if the problem was worse? Okay, Firefighter Dave, there's smoke in the basement, and my dog, he's scared, he's in the house, he wouldn't come out, what do we do? Oh no, well I'll put on all my stuff, and I'll go in the house, I'll look around, I'll find your dog. <laughs> Here's your dog, see, we'll rescue a dog, we'll do that, that's what we do. But you say, Firefighter Dave, I do not have a dog, I have a cat, in fact I have two cats. No problem, cats are a little smaller, they're a little sneakier, but we found as firefighters that they tend to hide under the bed or in the closet. So we'll go in and we'll look around. Oh, there's one under the bed. Oh, there's in the closet. We'll bring two cats out. Here's your two cats. No problem. But you say, Firefighter Dave, I do not have a dog or a cat or two cats or a dog and two cats. There's smoke in the basement and my hippopotamus is still down there. Hippopotamus? Okay. Down in the basement I go. <laughs> Holy cow. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. Why do you have a hippopotamus in your basement? Okay, new rule, new rule. If you have a hippopotamus, you can't keep them in your basement, okay? Keep them in your bedroom. Yeah. All right, let's look at my stuff. I got boots, hey, quiet. I got boots, I got pants, and I keep them together so I can get them on quickly. So I take my shoes off, just like that. I put my boots on, pull the pants up, just like that. See that? Now my feet are protected. I got special firefighting boots on. My legs are protected. My butt's protected. Yeah. But now, but now I'm ready to go fight some fire, right? Yeah. No, I got more stuff to put on. Hello. So I've got my coat. I put that on. It's made out of the same stuff as my pants. It's called Nomex. Nomex is a special material. doesn't burn. 
keeps me from catching fire. It's got insulation in it, keeps me from getting too hot. All right. I got this hood. Yeah, I got this hood. It's also made out of Nomex. Protects my neck, protects my ears, protects what's left of my hair. Yeah. Anybody in here have a backpack? Backpack? Okay, hands down. Firefighter Dave and all the other firefighters have backpacks, but we don't keep books or lunch in ours. We keep an air bottle in our backpack. Because when, when you go to a fire, it's all smoky and hot and all that. So we bring our own air with us so that we can breathe. Go right on the back, just like that. Backpack. And this air bottle is called a 30-minute bottle. Does anybody know why? That's right. It holds 15 minutes worth of air. What? It's a 30-minute bottle. Right. Holds 15 minutes worth of air. Right. 30 minutes of air if I'm standing at a fire doing this. Am I going to be doing that at a fire? No. I'm going to be working hard. I'm going to be pulling hoses and chopping holes and kicking in doors and carrying hippopotamuses and stuff. So I'm going to be breathing hard, so my 30-minute bottle is only going to last about 15 minutes. Okay? And then, so then when it, I turn it on, I'm going to turn it on, it's going to go beep, 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 beep. Listen carefully. You hear that? The beep, beep, beep is this alarm over here. This, this is a pass alarm. Something happens to me that lets everybody know that I'm having a problem. And that brrrr, that was just vibrating. This is my face piece. When the air bottle gets low, it goes brrrr, And that tells me, hey, Firefighter Dave, your air bottle's starting to get empty. Time to go outside and get another air bottle, all right? Anybody here never go swimming? Get a scuba mask, go underwater, look for fish and stuff? They gave us these firefighting scuba masks, all right? Just like that. Oh, save it. Goes on like this. See that? Just like a scuba mask, and then I'm going to pull my hood up, cover my ears and the top of my head. Got to put the helmet on because you got to protect that head bone, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Anybody here ever see the movie Star Wars? Star Wars? Okay, heads down. Does anybody here remember that one guy, um, Darth Vader? Darth Vader? Okay. I'm going to plug this in and I'm going to start breathing out of this bottle. If you think I sound like Darth Vader, I want you to raise your hand. Ready? What do you think, Darth Vader? Luke, Luke, I am your father. Wait, 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 okay, okay. Ready? The force is strong with this one. Yeah. So I got gloves. I put my gloves on and I protect everything. And this is all the stuff that we wear when we go into a fire. This is the stuff that all the firefighters have. And this is what we use to go in and rescue people, rescue dogs, cats, hippopotamuses. <laughs> Put out the fire. Okay, we've reached a point now where we're going to be able to do question and answers, okay? Now, questions usually start with who, what, where, when, why, how, are, is. How long have you been a firefighter? How much does all that stuff weigh? Do you have a fire dog at your station? What's the biggest ladder in the fire department? Have you ever actually rescued a hippopotamus? Those would all be good questions. Firefighter Dave, I saw a fire truck and it was red. Is that a question? Yeah. That's a statement. That's the beginning of a story. And we do not have time for all of you to tell me a story. So if you start to tell me a story, <clears throat> I'm going to stop you because we don't have time for stories, okay? Questions. Firefighter Dave, how many toes are on the alligator's foot? What? Okay, Is that, that's a question, but was that a good question? No. And it was a trick question because alligators have five toes on their front foot, only four on their back foot. That's a trick question. That one might be on the test. Just saying that one might be on the test. So, good questions. I've only got time to call anyone. So you got two questions. Pick your best questions because I've only time one question. And there's so many of you, I probably can't even call on everybody. So we've only got so much time. Okay? So make it a good question. I'll try to get you. No guarantees. Right here in front. What's that jacket on his helmet for? 
The glass thing on my helmet, he wants to know what the glass thing on my helmet for. It is a protective shield, like safety glasses. Well, it's like big safety glasses. Help protect my face from stuff, okay? Right there. Yep. It happens, but put my helmet on and I got a chin strap. And now my helmet doesn't come off. That's why they give us a chin strap. Right there. Yeah, you, go ahead. Okay, you. How do we get there? We don't, we try to get there safely. That's why they give us a fire truck. It's big, it's red, it's got lights, it's got sirens, it's got a big air horn. It seems like we're going really fast because we're big and red and the lights and sirens. We will only go as fast as we safely can because if we get in an accident on the way there, we don't help anybody. So, yeah, quickly but safely. Right here. How much does all of this stuff weigh? Well, I got boots and pants and coat and a hood and a mask and gloves and a helmet and a backpack. About 65 pounds. And then I'm going to grab an axe, I'm going to put that in my belt. That axe weighs about 8 pounds. And I got a radio, that weighs about 3 pounds. I might have a thermal imaging camera, that weighs, what, maybe 6 pounds. Maybe a pike pole, another 10, 15 pounds. Big old bundle of hose, maybe another 100, 125 pounds. And then they're going to put water in it, it's going to weigh like 300 pounds, so now I got to drag it. Then I got to rescue his hippopotamus. <laughs> right over here. Yep. Hey, hey, one person should be talking. How do you, how do you get inside of the houses if the door is How do we get inside the houses if the door is locked? Like nobody's home? Okay, we give a special training. We have axes, we have sledgehammers, we have pry bars. We learn how to kick doors in. Trust me when I say there is absolutely nowhere a firefighter can't get if they don't care how much noise they make or damage they cause. We have the tools to get anywhere okay we can go through a brick wall we can go through a steel door we can do it we've got it we've been there we can get you all right right here how can i get a hippopotamus you just saw me it's a brrr, big muscles, it helps that it's, it's an imaginary hippopotamus but are you asking me if i ever actually rescued hippopotamus I have rescued people, both big and small. I have rescued dogs, big, small. Cats, big and small. I've rescued iguanas. I've rescued a minor bird. I rescued a parakeet. I once wrestled a 12 and a half foot long Burmese python. But I never actually rescued a hippopotamus, no. Right there. When was my biggest fire? I've been a firefighter for almost 19 years. Yeah. We've been, I've been to a lot of fires. I've been to a lot of big fires, okay? Sometimes it's like a whole city block worth of buildings. Yeah. I think Roscan Bakery Fire was a big one. Um, we went one a couple years ago. All over. Right here. How many firefighters do you work with? How many firefighters do I work with? Are you asking how many firefighters work? How do you know? I'd say about half. But if you're saying how many actually work, there's a little over 200 firefighters on the Grand Rapids Fire Department. Uh, and at any given time, there's about 45 on duty, 45 to 50. We have three shifts, and we work a 24-hour shift, which means we go to work at 7 o'clock in the morning. We stay there all day. We eat lunch. We stay there till supper time. We stay there all night until 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, and then a different crew comes on. And we have three shifts. But all together, there's about 200 firefighters. Right back there with the red shirt and glasses. Yes. What's it like being a firefighter? It's pretty cool. We get to ride on fire trucks. We get to slide down the pole, and sometimes we do it just for fun. It's that cool. But really, the best part about it is getting out and helping people and getting out and doing stuff like this. It's fun. Okay? Right there. Oh, do I have a fire dog? I don't have a fire dog at my station, and I think Station 7 has a dog, and he rides on top of the engine, but I don't think he's real, but his name is Nozzle. Okay, right here. Well, hopefully the smoke detector woke you before it got there and you got out to the safe spot. But otherwise, make sure you got a second way out. That's something you should practice with your mom and dad or grandpa, grandpa, wherever you live and figure out how that works. But that's why you need working smoke detectors. So they give you a warning as far ahead of time as possible and you can get outside. Right here. 
You forgot? What if you were in a room and there's fire in the hallway? Again, that's why you need working smoke detectors, because then it would happen before. Okay? What if I didn't have my fire suit? We have smoke detectors in all the fire stations so that we know. So like if there's a fire in the fire station, the smoke detector would go off and let us know. And then we'd get out and then we would try to fight fire, but then the other firefighters would make fun of us because there was a fire at the fire station. And we would never live it down forever. And they would pick on us a long time. That's how it works, fire department. Right here. How many rescues have I been to? Again, I'm not certain. That's a, there's 19 years. And over the course of a year, there's 11 fire stations in the city, and they run about 20 to 21,000 calls a year. That's sick people, that's car accidents, that's fires, that's all the emergencies, okay? A lot of stuff happens. I, I honestly can't tell you. Hundreds, hundreds of hundreds. A lot of people, okay? This is going to be my last question right here, and we're going to move on to the test. Again, smoke detectors. That would let you know ahead of time so you could get out. That's why you got to have working smoke detectors. Okay, it's time for the test. I can give you a test, or we can have a competition between you and the teachers to see who is listening better. So test or competition? Competition. Competition it is. Okay, three questions for the students, three questions for the teachers. If it's a tie, I have tiebreaker questions. So first question is for the students. Question number one, what? Is the phone number for 911? Excellent. You were listening. Question number two for the students. What do you wear on your head if you get shot out of a cannon? Excellent. And finally, question number three for the students. How many toes on an alligator's front foot? They got all three of them. Okay, these questions are now for the teachers. Teachers only do not. Question number one for the teachers. Firefighter Dave and all the other fighters wear helmets to protect their head bone. What's another word for the head bone? Cranium. cranium. We will take cranium or skull or noggin. Nice. Question number two for the teachers. Has Firefighter Dave actually ever rescued a hippopotamus? No. No, it's for the teachers. I heard kids talking. But you are correct, no. And finally, question number three for the teachers. I know I said at least three times. What material are the pants, the coat, and the hood made out of that doesn't burn? Starts with letter N. Rhymes with Bomex. Oh, no Max, they got it. Oh, awesome. It's a tie. Oh, OK, OK, OK. These will be quick. Hey, 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 shh. These will be questions that I did not give you the answers to. You're going to have to use your own brain power. For the students and the students only, how many tails on an alligator's butt? One. Oh, they got it. I didn't even give them that answer. Whoa, they're smart. Woo, okay, do not give it to them. Do not give it to them. Shh. Teachers? What is the name? Shh, don't tell them. What is the name of this animal? No, 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 teacher, teacher, shh, teachers, teacher. No, let's do this again. Oh, teachers, what? Teachers, what is the name of this animal? Shh. Zebra. I have a teacher over here that says zebra. Is that your final answer? I asked for name, not species. His name is Carl. Oh, sorry. Oh, students win. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Focus. Focus. I am Firefighter Dave. Thank you so very much for your time and listening. You did very well. Okay. At this point, this part of my performance is all done. And I'm going to turn you back to your teachers, and you get to go outside in some sort of organized, chaotic manner, but be quiet, school's still in session. And you get to go see Engine 9, and they'll show you all the cool stuff on Engine 9. They're probably parked outside somewhere. All right? Thank you very much. Wait, I got one more. Hey!
Hey, over here. I have these handouts I'll be giving to your teacher. They're things that hang on your doorknob. You get to put your name on them. It reminds you you check smoke detectors. At the top is a website, a very kid-safe website with lots of games. So I hand them to teachers.